Nous demandons de bien vouloir demeurer debout pour l'hymne national. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the opening of the Ismaili Center. A recitation from the Holy Quran will be followed by translations in English, then in French. Excellences, distinguées invités, mesdames et messieurs, nous vous souhaitons la bienvenue à la cérémonie d'ouverture du Centre Ismaili. La récitation de versets du Saint-Coran sera suivi de leur traduction en anglais et en français. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum 
In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the everlasting one. Neither slumber overtakes Him, nor sleep. To Him belongs what is in the heavens and what is on the earth. Who is there that shall intercede with Him except by His permission? He knows what is their present state and their past, and they cannot grasp of his knowledge except what he wills. His throne encompasses the heavens and the earth, and the preservation of them is not a burden to him. He is the exalted, the supreme. Au nom d'Allah, le tout miséricordieux, le très miséricordieux. Allah, il n'y a de Dieu que lui, le vivant, celui qui subsiste par lui-même. Ni l'assoupissement, ni le sommeil n'ont de prise sur lui. Tout ce qui est dans les cieux et sur la terre lui appartient. Qui intercédera auprès de lui sans sa permission il sait ce qui se trouve devant les hommes et derrière eux, alors que ceux-ci n'embrassent de sa connaissance ce qu'il veut. Son trône s'étend sur les cieux et sur la terre. Leur maintien dans l'existence ne lui est pas une charge. Il est le Très-Haut, le Grandiose. The Right Honorable Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, our guest of honor, will now deliver his address. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Your Highness, members of the family former Governor General Clarkson and colleagues, 
from the Parliament of Canada, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, all of those who are watching this uh, from all across the country. Your Highness, four years ago, we stood together on this very site for the foundational ceremony of the Ismaili Center, Aga Khan Museum and Park. I said then that these projects promised to be another stunning addition to Canada's growing array of architectural treasures. We celebrate today the fact that that ambitious promise is now a splendid reality. For generations to come, this site and these buildings, as well as the fabulous collection of art and artifacts contained in the Aga Khan Museum, will be a source of inspiration, spiritual renewal, and cultural awareness. They will inspire not only Torontonians, but all visitors to this place, both Canadian and international. I look forward to my first visit to the Aga Khan Museum in just a short while. But for all of this and many more acts of goodwill, we will always be grateful to our esteemed fellow Canadian, His Highness, the Aga Khan. We celebrate today then, not only the harmonious meeting of green gardens and glass galleries, or of Italian marble and Canadian maple. We rejoice above all in the special spirit which fills this place and gives it its soul. For a very, very long time, this priceless gift will bring joy to the eyes and jubilation to the hearts of countless visitors. À partir d'aujourd'hui, le Canada s'enrichit d'un nouveau point de contact avec la riche civilisation de l'Islam. Je souhaite de tout cœur que le plus grand nombre possible de nos concitoyens et concitoyennes perdront avantage de cette avenue de connaissance et de partage qui s'ouvre devant nous. Since his accession to the Imamat in 1957, that's before I was born. <laughs> Since his accession as hereditary spiritual leader of the world's 15 million Ismaili Muslims, the Aga Khan has devoted an extraordinary amount of time, toil, and resources to the ideals of Islamic culture and civilization. In doing so, His Highness has contributed greatly to demystifying Islam throughout the world by stressing its social traditions, its history, of peace, of tolerance, and of pluralism. When a contrary and violent distortion so regularly dominates the news, this is a vision of Islam of which all Canadians can be proud. <laughs> Your Highness, I remember well the wise words you spoke in the House of Commons last February. Increasingly, you said then, I believe the voices of civil society are voices for change, where change has been overdue. They are voices of hope for people, who live, people living in fear. They are voices that can help transform countries of crisis into countries of opportunity. This is a message that is both universal and timeless. And it does us great honor as Canadians that it is now being propagated so powerfully from our own country, thanks to you, Your Highness. <laughs> Indeed, the decision to establish this significant initiative in Canada reflects the deep and long-standing partnership between the Imamat and Canada. This partnership stems from our shared commitment to pluralism, to civil society, human dignity, peace and understanding. And the impressive facility we are inaugurating today is not the first contribution the Aga Khan has made to the Canadian urban landscape. A first Ismaili center was opened in Canada 
in 1985, nearly 30 years ago, in Burnaby, British Columbia. In December 2008, I had the pleasure, again in the company of His Highness, of inaugurating the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat on Sussex Drive in Ottawa. That building, which has also been singled out for its architectural elegance, is now the seat of the Aga Khan Foundation Canada and the Global Centre for Pluralism. The centre, however, will be moving to a new location, also on Sussex Drive, at the former site of the Canadian War Museum. By a happy coincidence, that move will be completed in 2017, the 150th anniversary of our Confederation. I, I see strong symbolism in the conjunction of these two events. They remind us that Confederation was, in fact, an early political application of the sense of pluralism which still guides us today. As many of you know, this year, 2014, happens to be the bicentennial of the birth of Sir Georges Etienne Cartier. Along with our first Prime Minister, John A. Macdonald, one of the principal architects of our Confederation. It was Cartier who most thoroughly articulated and ultimately convinced the other fathers of Confederation that this new country would only succeed if it could accommodate the common interests and needs of people of different cultures and faiths through the development of a new federal system. C'est grâce à la vision de Cartier, grâce à sa foi dans le respect des différences et le partage des responsabilités, que la Confédération est née. Et c'est comme ça que le Canada va continuer de faire l'admiration et l'envie du monde entier. The wisdom that Cartier advanced 150 years ago the wisdom of acceptance and tolerance are lessons that the Canadian Ismaili community teaches still. In doing so, they, you, have contributed to keeping these fundamental values at the heart of our national identity. I am therefore very delighted to join all of you in declaring the Ismaili Center open. Son Altesse Lagacan s'adressera maintenant à l'auditoire. His Highness the Aga Khan will now deliver his address. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Prime Minister Harper, words fail me. And that's not often the case. <laughs> but words fail me to thank you enough for your most gracious and warm comments on this occasion. This is indeed a magnificent day. It is not often that we have an opportunity of this sort to come together in a beautiful setting, in a wonderful spirit of friendship, and to dedicate such a splendid architectural accomplishment. As we inaugurate this building, we also have the opportunity to contemplate what it represents, the inspiring traditions of the past, the stirring challenges of the future, and the continuing search for peace through prayer. Depuis les 1400 ans qui se sont écoulés depuis la révélation de la foi musulmane. Le monde de l'islam a évolué en un vaste ensemble d'interprétations et de traditions, comme ce fut le cas des autres grandes religions monothéistiques du monde. La communauté ismaélite compte bien entendu au nombre de ses expressions, spécifiques dans sa reconnaissance d'un imam unique et vivant, mais aussi dans son historicité géographique très diverse qui s'exprime sous la forme d'importantes communautés dans de nombreuses parties du monde. Canada, of course, has become a significant newer homeland for our community. As Ismailis have come here from so many places, from East Africa, 
from Tajikistan, from Afghanistan, from Syria, and from other parts of the world, all choosing to develop their destinies under the Canadian flag. One of the ways in which the Ismailis have expressed their identity wherever they have lived is through their places of prayer, known today as the Jamakhana. Other Muslim communities give their religious buildings different names, from Ribat and Zawiya to Khanaka. And in addition, there are other places where Muslims of all interpretations can come together, such as the non-denominational mosques. What we dedicate today is what we identify as an Ismaili center, a building that is focused around our Jamaat Kana, which was also includes many secular spaces. These are places where Ismailis and non-Ismailis, Muslims and non-Muslims, will gather for shared activities, seminars and lectures, recitals and receptions, exhibitions and social events. These meeting halls and lounges, work offices and conference rooms will serve the organizational needs of the Ismaili community. But they will also, we trust, be filled with the sounds of enrichment, dialogue, and warm human rapport as Ismailis and non-Ismailis share their lives in a healthy, gregarious spirit. Yes. <laughs> We are a community that welcomes the smile. <laughs> and soaring above it all is the great crystalline dome that you have observed, through which light from the prayer hall will provide a glowing beacon symbolizing the spirit of enlightenment that will always be at the heart of the center's life. The size and complexity that we celebrate today has been immense. And so is the list of those whom we salute for having made it possible. Certainly our list should begin with the Prime Minister. <laughs> with whom we have shared so many magnificent moments and so many worthwhile endeavors on many fronts in this country and beyond. The Canadian government has been a strong, significant partner for the Ismaili Imamat and the Arkan Development Network. And we recall with special pleasure, of course, the foundation ceremony of this site at which the Prime Minister so graciously presented me with the enormous honor of Canadian citizenship. We are grateful as well to all the officials who have facilitated this accomplishment in the federal government and in the provincial government, where the Premier's unwavering enthusiasm has meant so much to us. And the same thing is true of the City of Toronto and its dedicated councillors and staff, as well as the Bata family and the people of this neighbourhood. I'm also deeply pleased to salute the donors who have so generously supported the building of outstanding Ismaili centres across the world, including this centre here in Toronto, as well as the dedicated leaders, staff and volunteers from the Ismaili community who have also played such a significant role. And of course I want to recognize with special appreciation those who designed built and decorated this space, especially the eminent architects, Charles Correa and his daughter, Nondita. Thank you.
Let me underscore as well the important contributions of the Toronto firm of Moriyama and Tashima, of Gotham Notting Hill, and of the great German Muslim artist Karl Schlemminger. And of course, it is with the deepest admiration that I thank the person whose guiding hand has been so important at every stage of this project, a member of my family, my brother. Our focus today is on two splendid new buildings here on Winford Drive. But I would be remiss not to mention the new public space that will tie these two new buildings together, the Archon Park, which will have its official opening when the vegetation matures next year. When our planning for the Toronto Smiley Center started in 1966, we decided to ask the younger generation of Ismailis about their vision of this building. What did they want it to represent? How did they see it functioning? In response, young people from the ages of 18 to 27 generously shared their aspirations with us. They told us that they wanted a building that would be forward-looking while also being anchored in traditional community values. They also wanted the building, a building in which they could strengthen their personal relationships, a place where they could not only unite in prayer, but could also develop new life-shaping associations amongst themselves and with other Canadians. They hoped that the center would become, and I quote, a great avenue through which they could integrate into society at large, a place that would command the respect of all those who would visit it. It is with all these thoughts in mind that we selected for the center a world-class architect who had designed for many faiths, but also in an idiom for today and tomorrow. He was a man who deeply believes, as he puts it, that, quote, tradition and modernity are not opposites. And the result, as you can see, is a building in which traditional elements of Muslim architecture are given a confident, forward-looking vocabulary. The young men and women whose views we sought back in the year 2000 are now between 32 and 41 years old, in the middle of their careers. It is my earnest hope that the formation of this center, which will now become theirs, has responded to their hopes 14 years ago. Let me acknowledge, of course, that a part of that response is found in the entirety of this new complex on Winford Drive, including the Arkhan Museum, welcoming the public with its unique concentration of cultural assets and the surrounding park, providing a remarkable environment for relaxation and contemplation for peoples of all ages and backgrounds. In sum, I am pleased to think that the complex being opened today does indeed meet the requests that were articulated 14 years ago, even if I have not been able to concentrate them, all of them in one building. The fusion of tradition and modernity with this building, which this building achieves and the blend of spiritual, educational, and social objectives that it embodies have also characterized our other Ismaili centers in Vancouver, London, Lisbon, Dubai, and Dushanbe. All of them were designed by architects of great international standing, and I would emphasize 
of great multicultural sensitivity. Charles Correa, for example, comes from an Indian background and has also designed Hindu and Christian buildings. The architect for our Vancouver Center 30 years ago was Bruno Freschi, whose family is of Italian background and whose work has included a Sikh place of worship. The new Aga Khan Park it was designed by an architect of Lebanese heritage, Vladimir Jurovic. And the Aga Khan Museum is the work of a superb Japanese professional, Fumihiko Maki. How pleased we are that all of these fine artists are with us today. Thank you, Bibi. In its origins, in its design, and in its programs and activities, the complex we all inaugurate today is animated by a truly pluralistic spirit. In this respect, too, it reflects the deep-set Ismaili values, pluralistic commitments that are so deeply embedded in Canadian values. These commitments have been strikingly evident in a recent government initiative that I would like to mention today. I refer to the establishment less than two years ago of the new Office of Religious Freedom led by Ambassador Andrew Bennett. We hope that our organizations in Canada can be helpful allies of the Office of Religious Freedom as it works to support people throughout the world who are targeted because of their religious affiliations. Just a week ago, Ambassador Bennett and the Minister for Multiculturalism, Mr. Kenny, received the leader of an ancient religious minority as he arrived from Egypt for an extended visit to Canada. He was Pope Tawadros of the Christian Coptic Orthodox Church. Canada's effort to extend the hand of friendship to Pope Tawadros, whose people have come through difficult times, confirms and renews the great Canadian message of universal welcome. Let me conclude by returning to another context in which the hand of friendship has been playing a major role. When I mentioned that our planning for this complex began 18 years ago, some of you probably wondered how people sustained their enthusiasm through such a long process. Yes, 18 years. <laughs> My response is to say that through these 18 years, we have been inspired by a great sense of common purpose as we have sought to create places and spaces of true enlightenment. And in doing so, we have also been strengthened by a pronounced spirit of friendship. And what a joy it is to celebrate that spirit at a time when so many, so much of the world's attention is focused on climates of belligerence. This first step in the planning of the center in the late 1900s was to find an appropriate building, a building site, one that would be convenient to a large number of Ismailis. This was a challenge in and of itself as we tried to reconcile the needs of more established Ismailis with the requirements of newly arriving and less settled immigrants. After a long search, we selected a site, a site which is little more than half of the site we have today. It was located where the new museum is now standing. Happily, we were successful in acquiring that land, and it was evident that the hands of friendship helped to make that acquisition possible. As the project progressed, we learned that the Bata family was intending to give up its office building on a site adjacent to ours. An elegant building, but one where time had taken its toll. Once again, the hand of friendship was extended. 
and Mrs. Butter made it possible for us to acquire that building. Because it stood on the highest point of the area, we decided to move the Ismaili Center to this site and to redesign it accordingly. The next step, of course, was to seek approval to remove the Butter building. As it became apparent over time that the Bata building had little residual life, the spirit of friendship again was present and we were authorized to replace it. As these events unfolded, my late uncle, Prince Azuddin Aga Khan, passed away and his widow, Princess Catherine, invited me to become the owner of their remarkable art collection here again, the hand of generous friendship was extended, this time by my own family. Regrettably, Princess Catherine cannot be with us today. But I might note in passing that the decisive role at critical junctures in this process was played by two remarkable women, Princess Catherine and Mrs. Bata. And so it was that things came together. I was able to join my late uncle's collection with part of the collection that I had assembled for the Institute of Ismaili Studies in London and with some of my personal objects. But where should this assembled collection be situated? After numerous discussions with many thoughtful people, the decision was made to build a museum on the very site that had been selected originally for the Ismaili Center. And here we, are, here we are today. The story of over 18 years has indeed been one of deeply shared purpose. I hope you will join me in my profound happiness in recalling the cradle of friendship in which this center has been born. And I know that all of you will also share my profound wish that the center will now prolong, decade after decade, its beautiful legacy of friendship and enlightenment. Thank you. Stephen Harper, Premier ministre du Canada, et son Altesse Laga Khan vont dévoiler maintenant la plaque commémorative pour marquer l'ouverture du Centre Ismaili. The Right Honorable Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, and His Highness the Aga Khan will unveil the commemorative plaque to mark the opening of the Ismaili Centre. Ceci conclut la cérémonie d'ouverture du Centre Ismaili. This concludes the opening ceremony of the Ismaili Center. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of the Right Honorable Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, His Highness the Aga Khan, and their party. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, 
Veuillez, s'il vous plaît, vous lever pour le départ du très honorable Stephen Harper, Premier ministre du Canada, et de son Altesse, Lagacan et leur entourage.